Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to display Zodiac signs and symbols in your Microsoft Access database. I had this one on my list to do sometime in the future. Someone emailed me a couple days ago asking how to do this. And uh, just today, someone else posted it in the forum. So what are the odds? So I decided to throw this together real quick. Now, we're going to do this without any programming. All right, we have a VBA less solution. So this is not a developer one. I'm going to show you how to do this with a couple of little functions and a D lookup. We're going to make a little lookup table for the different zodiac signs and the dates that they fall in. All right, before we get started, a couple of prerequisites for you. First, I use the ISO date format, which is year, month, day. If you're not familiar with that, you can go watch this video. But the trick I'm going to show you is going to work pretty much with any date format you have, so it doesn't really matter. But this is what I use, just so you're not confused. You're going to need to know how to make calculated fields in a query in Microsoft Access. You're going to need to know how to use the year, month, and day functions to take a date value and break it down into its components, Y, M, and D. And then once we have those components, we're going to have to build a new date value to look up in our table. So for that, we'll use the date serial function. And finally, we're going to use the granddaddy of all lookup functions, DLOOKUP. If you've never used DLOOKUP before, go watch this video first. We need a DLOOKUP with two components, so it's going to be a little bit of a tricky DLOOKUP, but I think we can handle it. If you aren't familiar with any of the topics I just showed you, go watch those videos first, then come on back. These are all free videos. You'll find them on my website, on my YouTube channel. I'll put links down below that you can click on. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I built a Zodiac T table, which is my lookup table. Let's take a look at it. Real simple. Zodiac ID is an auto number. The Zodiac name, don't just put the word name. That's a reserved word, right? Zodiac name, short text. That's the name, like Leo, Virgo, whatever. The start date, the end date, and then the symbol. Okay. Let's see what's in the table. Okay. You'll notice that I've got Capricorn duplicated. I'll explain why in just a second. But here's the name, the start date, and the end date. Now, I picked a year. I picked 1900. You can use any year that you want. And this is because it's easier to have DLOOKUP look stuff up between actual dates than it is to try to just compare the month and day. Okay? So what we're essentially going to do is convert the person's birthday to that date in the year 1900 and then compare it to this chart. It's much, much easier mathematically. Now that's the reason why I split Capricorn because it's easier to say if it falls between December 22nd and December 31st as one, since it doesn't overlap the year, and then another Capricorn entry, January 1st to January 19th. This way we don't have to bother comparing the year at all. It's just one lookup, same year, everybody's the same. So if you're doing something later on, like let's say you're building a dating database, dating site, whatever, and you have to compare signs, you can't compare the IDs in this case because the IDs will be different. So compare the actual Zodiac name. Now, the symbol, where did I get that symbol from? Well, these are actually extended ASCII characters that are in Windows. Here's my handy dandy notepad, there they are. All right, how do you get that? You use the Windows Emoji Keyboard, which is the Windows key, Hold that down and then hit the semicolon. And this guy pops up. And I've talked about this guy in previous videos. So right, put right here what you're searching for. I want Aries. Oh, there it is. Like that. Boom. I even give you a little RAM. See? <laughs> if you want that. Right, Scorpio. That's me, Scorpio. Right there. See? Look at it. It goes in your notepad. Then you can just copy these into your database. They're not exact. They don't look exactly like they don't get, you don't get the color. But you get the symbol. All right. If you want to use your own fancy images, you can put an image file name here and then use the trick I show in my images video to display that instead. But I think this works just fine. All right, and here's my images video. Now you might be saying, Rick, what's this guy right there, Ophiuchus? Well, I've always been a backyard astronomer. So if you're into astronomy, not astrology, then Ophiuchus is the 13th constellation that actually crosses the ecliptic like the rest of these guys. These are all classical astrology, evenly divided up into 12 zones, right? 
But astronomy, if you're actually dealing with constellations and science and stuff like that, Ophiuchus is the 13th zodiac sign. I could go on for hours and hours about this one. <laughs> but we won't include that one in our database. We'll use the classic zodiac. Okay, so how do we get this to display next to our customers? Well, next we're going to build a zodiac queue, a query design view. We're going to bring in our customer table. All right, customer t.star, bring all those fields in. Next, I'm going to alias the customer sense field. We're going to cheat. I've already got a date field in here called customer sense. We're going to pretend that's their date of birth. So I'm going to make a field here. I'll zoom in so you can see it. We're going to make a field called DOB, and that's going to be the customer sense. So we're, we're cheating. All right, so customer sense is now henceforth DOB. Got it? Okay. Now, next up, we're going to say, okay, my Zodiac table is all based on the year 1900. So we're going to convert that date of birth to the same month and day in the year 1900. So month DOB will give you the month, 1 through 12, right? Day DOB will give you their birth day, so 23 in my case, right? And then we're going to use date serial to build a date out of that. So this will give you, in my case, October 23rd, 1900. And that is what we're going to call Z. Date serial returns an actual valid date. Okay? So that's going to be in Z. Now that I've got Z, I have an actual date that I can look up in this table because it's going to be, all of them are going to be in the year 1900. So I can look up October 23rd, 1900, and that should fall in Scorpio. So what does that look like? Well, here's Zodiac name. I'll zoom in. It's a fairly complicated D lookup, but I'll walk you through it. It's not that hard. Most D lookups have one value, right? Where you say like, look up the first name from the customer table where the customer ID equals four. Well, this one has an inequality. It's got two values. All right, so we're using D lookup. What are we looking up? The Zodiac name. Where are we getting it? The Zodiac table. And then here's the tricky part. The start date, which is a field in that table, has to be less than or equal to Z and Z has to be less than or equal to the end date, okay? Now what you want for the criteria is this, right? The start date is less than or equal to that, 10-23-1900, and the date is less than or equal to end date. But in access, remember, we have to put these guys around date values, right? Okay? And this whole thing has to be inside a string, so you gotta put the quotes around it like this. Okay, and this is not hard coded, so we have to put the value Z in there. So I have to close the quotes and Z and open the quotes back up again and do the same thing here, right? Quotes and Z and quotes. And that's where I get this jumbled mess from. Sometimes it's easier if you write this out using Notepad with the actual date hard coded in there and then substitute the things like I just did. Right? I can just write this by off the top of my head because I've been doing this for 30 years. All right, but this is not easy stuff. Okay? Okay. So there's my final one. That'll do the lookup. And then over here is the same exact thing for the symbol. We're just looking up the zodiac symbol instead of the the, the name. Okay? Then when I do that, if I run that query, there's all my peoples. Okay, here's the DOB. I flipped this around for the screenshot. There's the DOB, which is the customer sense value, I know. All right, so Z becomes the same date in the year 1900. And I can look this date up now in this table because these are all based in the year 1900. The D look up for the name, the D look up for the zodiac symbol. See that? And make sure you're working with date values that don't have times in them. You don't want to have a date of birth with a 5 p.m. in there. Otherwise, it'll throw things off. Date only. And if you do have dates that have times in them, use the date value function. I'll put a link to that down below as well. Now, let's get this bad boy into the form. So what I'm going to do is save changes here. In my customer form, oh, look how pretty that is. What I do there? Well, we're going to change the record source of the form now to that Zodiac queue because it'll add those extra fields. You could put the D lookups directly in these text boxes if you want to. That's another option. But since this query already has those fields, there's no sense in doing that. Okay. 
As long as your query isn't too complicated, this would work fine. Don't bring in tons of stuff into the query and expect to still be able to edit this guy. It doesn't work that way. But simple lookups are fine. Okay, there's the Zodiac name field. There's the Zodiac symbol, and I just changed the color and the font, made it a little bit bigger. I think I made it like 36 point and made it purple and all that. And that gives you that. Okay, nice and pretty. Now, are there other ways to do this? Yeah, you could, I've, I did a quick, uh, Google search and yeah, there's VBA functions and code and all kinds of crazy stuff you could use. But as you can see, this is certainly possible to do without any programming. And that's sometimes the, the harder part of my job sometimes is my brain immediately went to, oh, just write a function. You know, write a function that returns the value based on the dates. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute, can we do it without any programming? <laughs> that's sometimes just tougher for me to figure out the non-programming way. I've been, I've been coding since I was eight years old, so my, my brain immediately goes to VB. But I think this solution is just fine and elegant enough, and it works good. And uh, I'm curious to see what you have to say, though. What do you think? Do you like my solution, or would you prefer a VB solution where you hard code the dates into your VB code? Let me know. Post something in the comments below. But that is your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.